Early morning on Port Phillip Bay, last day in October, looking for a bit of soft plastic action with uh, Travis and Lenny. Just the dawn's coming up. See it rising up over there, over Patterson River and Chelsea. And where are we here, Travis? We're just looking for a little little artificial reef. Yep. There's a bit of bait here. That's what you're trying yeah, to mark. Some, it's looking good. Now we're seeing some, some fish, fish here. So now we're gonna anchor on these fish, try and burly them up and get them okay. going on the plastics. So yeah, they're, cer yeah, they're there. certainly sitting on this structure. Mm. Now this structure is likely to be um, man-made, bit of... Likely to, yeah. Yeah, that's good. So now we've just got to put ourselves into the wind now. Anchor down and lay back. Yep. And the thing I like about your boat, mate, What's you've that? got a stress-free anchor <laughs> winch, so no one has to go out the front and drop the anchor. It's good. Yeah, on those rough days, it's, uh, it can be a bit scary out there. Okay. You can get a bit wet. There's a few more here too. Yeah. Alright. So now I've just got to position the boat in the right position so that we can come back over the fish. The challenge for me on this trip is to work out a way to fish soft plastics around the myriad of set bait rods. Rocket launcher setups are common on the bay on boats like this. And the trick with my soft plastic is to cast it right out the back, let it sink to the lower and midwater levels, and then simply work the soft plastic up through the set bait rigs. Okay, now, this is my heavier outfit that I use for soft plastics. It's a, you know, about a, a good size 3500, 4000 size reel and a um, Saltiga Bay jigging rod, probably about six foot six long. Um, I still, however, use six pound gel spun though. Even on my lighter rod, which is a seven footer with a, um, with a Stella on it, Still use six pound gel spun, never, never change that. Six pound gel spun actually give you about up to 20 pound effective breaking strain anyway, so it's plenty. On this outfit, I've got a um, quarter ounce torpedo uh, jig head, um, probably about a 1 0 size hook. You need a hook that's uh, got a bit of size to it, mainly because the soft plastics I'm using here today are big five inch gulp minnows and you just need a bit of, um, you need a bit of gape in the hook just to have it uh, sit proud of the soft plastic. Earlier on in the morning, I was using a uh, four inch, um, but I really think now that the sun's up, you need to have a bit of a profile. Uh, white is a very good color. One of the hot colors at the moment in these, uh, in these jerk shads, it's a five inch jerk shad, is this um, pink shine been catching a lot of fish on them. So I'm just going to uh, rig this up and then I'm just going to work the soft plastic back up through the burly trail out the back of the bait rods here and see what we can pick up. And I'm not going to be too worried about trying to keep it on the bottom either. Um, cast it out and get it down, get in contact with the bottom. But then I'm just going to shake it up through the back because I think uh, it's not a hot bite at the moment, the fish aren't congregated up, they just could be cruising through all over the place. So I'm just going to prospect around and just see what we can pick up. But that, that rig like that will catch you a snapper. If your lead is too heavy, if your line's too heavy here, I think it, it really does reduce the chances of you hooking up. So while you may hook a good fish and lose it because your lead is too light, probably better on these uh, tougher days than uh, not getting a fish at all. One other important um, little point, I always fish my soft plastics on a, um, on a loop, on a loop knot. In this case, it's a left, I use a lefty's loop knot here. Um, tie it. I always like tying the loop with a bit of length because I'm using the lighter leader, and in this case, it's seven kilo uh, maxima. Um, like to make it a little bit longer, um, gives you a little bit more abrasion resistance on the, um, around the mouth area of a snapper if you get one on. But makes the um, soft plastic swing, 
just dance a little bit better, be a bit more, um, be a bit more natural in the water as well. So when you're tying them up, if you can, learn a good loop knot, whether it's a perfection loop or in this case here a lefties loop, tie your soft plastics for snapper on a loop knot. So we'll just try this and see how we go. It's important to get contact with the bottom. Depending on your jig head weight, this quarter ounce I think will get down. We're in about 18 metres here, so it's going to take about three or four minutes to get down to the bottom. Don't like using too heavy a jig head. Always prefer just to use the minimum weight you need to get down to the job that you want to do. If it's too light, it'll just waft around and never get down, get contact with the bottom. If it's too heavy, again, just a bit like having too heavy, too heavy a gel spun, too heavy a leader. I just think you just get much, much less interest in your, in your soft plastic. I'll even drop it again halfway through the retrieve as well. Again, the advantage of just using a six pound braid is it'll just drop back quickly. Very easy to, to monitor just exactly what the jig's doing. Back on the bottom now. Just a shake and retrieve is all that you need in these sort of situations at times. Main thing with fishing a soft plastic for snapper is that your retrieves, you, you retrieve through the rod. It's not through the reel. All you're doing is taking up slack with the reel. So get your action in your retrieve just through the rod. Let it drop back, just take up your slack on the reel. And again, don't be afraid about working your soft plastic two, three or even four metres off the bottom. Snapper will definitely come up and bite well off the bottom. And on these bright days, give the pink and whites a bit of a go. And remember, six kilo litre. Keep that, keep that litre size down a little bit. You're sure you'll lose a few fish, but I think you're going to hook a lot more. Oh. Yes, I think we've got one on here, Len. Oh, good work, Bill. Feels like a snapper. Yeah, it's got the head shakes of a snapper. Yep. Now he took that in mid-water too, up off the bottom. I'll probably need a net here because I've just gone down to a 12 pound litre. I'd say it's probably a couple of kilo. Just nail that big, oh no, it's about a kilo. Just grab in there. Beautiful. Now unlike bait, where you probably do need to use 10 kilo litre, fish have been a bit slow this morning, so I actually changed down to six kilo litre. Um, but as you can see, these snapper, when they hit a soft plastic, and this is not a big fella, it's only about two kilos, I'd say. Typical of Port Phillip Bay snapper. But taken in the mouth, nice and clean. So if you want to keep it, you can eat it, I guess. But if you want to release it, Nice and easy to let it go. Nice clean way to fish for snapper. And he certainly nailed this five inch soft plastic. Certainly a soft plastic on a tail that long is not too big for a little two kilo fish like this. Lovely fish too. Probably been in the bay a little while. And I was just shaking that soft plastic back up the back of the boat. Casting it right out behind the baits. So we're doing a bit of burling here and we've got a couple of baits out. I was just shaking it back up and it took it, I would say, probably five, six metres off the bottom. Probably about, no, probably about four metres off the bottom. So they'll certainly come up off the bottom and take a soft plastic.